So we can um, start the second session. So welcome uh, again for the second session. And now we have four speakers from um, the area of Oceania, I think. And they are going to talk about uh, how to set up, um, let's say, an integration be between uh, FOS4G and state of the map. And I'll hand over. Who is the first speaker? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so my, my name is Eduardo. I'm going to talk about Oceania. I'm going to introduce these fine looking gentlemen in a moment. But first, Oceania. So, for those that don't know, it's not a, myth a mythical land, it's not uh, a mythical drug, as far as I'm aware. It's not a city under the sea. It's actually, a, I guess, a hodgepodge of countries in the South Pacific that don't fit anywhere else. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today. Uh, this is a map that was apparently the first atlas of the world. And you can see that at least as far as Europeans were concerned, Oceania didn't exist until very recently. But we're not going to be talking about the first map of the world. We're going to be talking about a conference that we put together and uh, an entity that we've created and kind of the beginnings of this and maybe talk with you guys at the end as well about what it takes to form an entity, some of the concerns around forming an entity, um, and what we're looking to do next. So I'll introduce the first speaker. Actually, I'll introduce them all. So this is Alex. He's one of the few Tasmanians with one head as opposed to two. Um, he's also the treasurer of <laughs> OzGeo. We have Adam, who, Iceman Adam. Um, he loves ice of the Antarctic variety. He's a jack of all trades. He'll be... Um, talking after Alex, and then finishing is the president of Geo Oceania, the koala slash grizzly bear that is John. Um, half Canadian, half Australian, kind of he sees where, what he feels like on each day. Um, but I'll introduce Alex first. Thanks, Ed. So I want to give you a little bit of a background onto the beginnings of our organization of our conference. So um, at the end of November, uh, in late 2017, there was a group of people in Queensland who organised a QGIS meetup, and they thought they'd get a few folks together and have a little bit of a chat. And it ended up having 80 people there, including people coming from as far as Hong Kong uh, and, and as far afield as Tasmania, all the way to Queensland. And they had a really good forum, a really great discussion. Were you there, Jody? I was, but I heard, because I had one back to Boston VAU in Brisbane. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we had a so this is this is the next generation, <laughs> Phosphor G, the next generation. So so anyway, there were four, uh, eighty people in, in Brisbane, and it sort of proved that there is a bit of a, a need or a latent a, a bit of demand for this kind of thing. So at the end of twenty seventeen, over beers, over sort of a few different channels of discussion and forums, uh, there was a group of people that decided to form the kernel of a conference. And we put uh, the word out there, and it gathered together a group of people. And so we ended up having 12 or, or sort of went up and down people who agreed that we all wanted to run this conference. We went and uh, sought out the relationships with OSGO and the OpenStreetMap Foundations and, and made sure we could get permission to use the branding and the name. Uh, we thought pretty hard and had some good discussions around the scope. Do we just keep it modest and aim for Australia? Do we sort of say Australia, New Zealand? Do we go for Southeast Asia or the Pacific? But we start including big inconvenient places like the USA if we do that. Hey. Um, we ended up picking Oceania, which you can see in the picture here. This is from Wikipedia. Uh, so it includes, um, I guess, the sort of the, the behemoth in the room. So Australia, which is a sort of a, a, the large entity, and New Zealand, which is reasonably large, but a whole bunch of South Pacific Island countries. And so. Um, Oceania was the region that we picked and it's um, like early on it was a bit of a feeling like we're not sure that we can actually justify doing this. So we're, so we're aspiring to be inclus inclusive of the whole of Oceania. And like I said, like we, we don't want it just to be Australia pretending like we're including others. And so there's a few initiatives that we'll talk about later which sort of made sure that we could um, include the whole region. And uh, since it was our first conference, we needed to try and keep it simple but manageable um, and the right amount of formality. And so we sought a partnership with the Surveying and Spatial Sciences Institute in Australia in order to handle finances and 
uh, potentially signed contracts with venues and this kind of thing so that we weren't personally taking on uh, risk. And so that was a really valuable thing for us having the support of SSSI to, to take the risk and in exchange what we did was we uh, shared some of the surplus that came off at the end. So that's the beginning. And then in the middle, we ran a conference. So as I said, we aimed for, uh, in a fair bit of ways to do it modestly, a target of about 80 to 120 people. Uh, we were lucky enough to have a partnership with the University of Melbourne, which meant that we had a free venue for the conference. And we ended up just getting support from all over the place, um, more than we could have imagined in so many different areas. So sponsorship targets were doubled. Uh, we ended up closing registrations. We sold out at 250 people. We ran a full day of workshops with 14 different workshops. We ran two days of conference, including uh, four keynotes, a couple of those international. Uh, we had uh, 45 presentations. And we ran a community day with uh, about half a dozen different events um, supporting OpenStreetMap and open source software projects and, and really getting some great participa participation. So the way we, we managed it was that we um, elected a chair, we ran fortnightly meetings, uh, we kept the sort of rhythm going there, and we uh, um, allocated a lead in a, a various different a group of areas. So whether that's sponsorship, marketing, the program, community day. And in, so in this way, we worked really well together, but had someone responsible for each of these areas and pushed through. Um, and the other thing that we'll talk about a bit later as well is engaging with the community. So quite often we'll reach out and put a survey out or something on Twitter or, or ask uh, through a mailing list and, and, and request um, input into structure or content or, or whatever it might be. And that worked really well in that we not only uh, sort of sought for feedback and got people to have a bit of ownership in the event itself, we also ended up having that as being part of promoting the event. So it, um, yeah, it was sort of winning in two different ways. In terms of feedback, uh, we, um, uh, we got some really good feedback. Uh, all the positive stuff is great, it's positive, but there's a, little, a few things where we have opportunities to improve. So we got a bit of mixed feedback on the panel session that we, we need to do something different there. And in terms of program structure, I think this event's doing it quite well in that we have 20 minutes to speak, uh, five minutes for questions, and then five minutes for changeover. And keeping the start times really strict is, is really key. So. We had a bit of a uh, bit of a mess in between um, rooms and stuff. We got some good feedback, um, things like donuts. So make sure you do donuts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we we got some sort of criticism. It's really good. What can we improve? And I think that's really important. Um, don't have Macs and Microsoft computers up on the stage. Apparently, is an important thing. But <laughs> more seriously, there's some some great uh, comments there. Uh, and look, overall feedback, someone's enthusiastic enough to write in all caps and say it was the best user group conference I've been to and I've attended approximately 30 of them. So that's a pretty good uh, supporting statement. And just to wrap up my section here, we've got a whole bunch of people saying yes, they are coming to Wellington. And so we have a conference coming up in November in Wellington. So we'd love to see you all there. Uh, around half of that committee are new and the other half are continuing, so we've got that continuity, that shared sort of learning of um, standing on the shoulders of the previous. And already we've got great sponsorship from people like Orbica, thank you Kurt, and we've sold out our early bird uh, tickets in a week, so that's really great support. So hope to see you there and I'll um, pass over to Ed. Thanks Alex. All right, so one thing that comes, like that we had to, to get through to create an entity and also to run a conference was to work out whether it was a good idea to merge two communities. So we had the OpenStreetMap community that is generally involved with state of the map as far as conferences are concerned. And then we had the PhosphorG community, um, I guess the OSGEO community more broadly. So I want to talk, talk about some of the differences of those two communities and then some of the commonalities that made, made it um, kind of a good idea to merge them. So differences, OpenStreetMap, particularly in Australia, I think it's a bit different in, in Australia, in Oceania, is that it's a lot of hobbyists. So if you go to a place like the US, a lot of people in the OpenStreetMap community are actually part of corporations that have some something to do with OpenStreetMap. That's not necessarily the case in Oceania. In fact, it very rarely is. Uh, it's obviously built around a single project, so the OpenStreetMap community has a focus on one project, one open source project. 
And a lot of them are self-funded because they're hobbyists, because they're part of the community, they're often funding themselves to go to the conferences. Whereas if you look at the Open Geo community in Oceania, a lot of them are geospatial professionals. A lot of them know each other already uh, and they're technically minded. And they're also often employer funded. So the, the team at Orbica, for example, if they're going to a conference, hopefully Orbica can fund them. Um, so we, some differences there and, and kind of we had to keep that in mind when we're organizing the conference and, and when we're organizing Wellington this year as well. So why would it make sense to join these two communities together? I think one, they're, they're both familiar with the open source ethos uh, and the volunteer ethos. They're, they're comfortable with, with those concepts of volunteering. They're interested in solving geospatial problems, whether it's with OpenStreetMap or whether it's with uh, QGIS or whether it's with grass, they're, they're, they're trying to solve a problem that has a geospatial component. And that's common whether they're technically minded or not. And so this degree of overlap means it makes sense to combine forces and, and, and put a conference together that in, incorporates both communities, even if it means we have a long name like FOSFOG, State of the Map, Oceania 2019. So we put these two communities together. We did the conference that Alex just talked about. And then we realized we needed to create an entity to, to make this more sustainable. So I won't get into the details of that entity, but um, here's our nice certificate from the Australian Securities and Investment Commission. And uh, so we have the entity and would love to talk to you about kind of the governance structures and the kind of what's next um, as far as an entity is concerned. But just to do a quick cross section, a quick health check of this entity that we've created. Uh, I won't go through all of these, but uh, I'll take one from each. So strengths, I guess the most interesting one here, you could say that we built a strong foundation through consensus. So last year when we had these, these meetings to organize a conference, a lot of the time we would uh, try to w reach consensus before moving forward. And that was often a slow process. To get everyone in a room to agree is difficult. Via email, it's even more difficult. But this meant that when we moved forward with a decision, a lot of the community had felt like they, they owned the decision. And that, in the long term, is more sustainable. Weaknesses, I guess the interesting one here would be that none of us had experience in running a formal entity. We're making this up, like I'm sure a lot of us are when we do these things. I think. Um, I think that might show every now and then, but uh, I think we have a good diversity of experience. And so these guys, for example, have a lot more experience in running entities than me, and I've learned a lot from them, but I think that diversity of experience is good. Opportunities, I guess the interesting one here would be, I think the, the travel grant program. So one unique thing about Oceania is that we have so many different islands and, and uh, it's quite a, a large region. And so it can become quite expensive to send people from, say, Fiji all the way to Perth if we were to have a conference in Perth one day. So having funds available to people with uh, less economic means to travel across the Pacific would, um, would be great. We've, do we've done the travel grant program already, but there's more opportunity to get funding and, and to increase that. Maybe we'll have 30, 40 participants going forward. And then threats. So I reckon there's gonna be a recession coming. That's my prediction, you heard it here first. <laughs> That's a threat to us. Um, but just like more seriously, you know, if the macroeconomic conditions change, are we, are we ready to deal with that? Financial misappropriation, if, if John takes the funds and goes to his cabin in the Yukon, are we prepared to deal with that? Do we have a structure in place um, to make it so that he can't do that? <laughs> yeah, so I'll pass it to Adam now. Okay, hi, I'm, I'm Adam, and um, my section here is to talk about community responsibility. So we're, we're building this thing for all of our Oceania, and we really took on board the idea that we came across in Dar es Salaam for the international conference of leaving no one behind. So with this giant, really diverse um, culturally and financially organ, um, region that we look after, how do we do that? So um, we basically... Uh, we're the first regional phosphor G conference to be funded for a travel grant program by the, the global organization and we, we really appreciated that it helped us bring eight people from all across the region that would not have been able to make it otherwise and we intend to continue that so um, a couple of 
uh, really new things we did. We started a, a thing called the Good Mojo program, which is again based on people volunteering extra money where they can. And um, we basically have quarantined money for um, initiatives like travel grant programs or sponsoring networking breakfasts for women in geospatial or travel grant people, um, down to funding catering for people that needed to bring children to the conference. Um, and one of the cool things we did there with our sponsors is we had really limited space for a table, so we said, well, if you don't want a table, we'll donate money into that as an organisation. Um, we included families in the conference. We looked at childcare, we talked to a bunch of people and we were like, well, just bring your kids because they're the future, they're just, you know, we don't have traditional families anymore and very few people get to, you know, park their kids with someone else, so we'll just bring them and we'll, we'll all work together on that. Um, but the key thing is we had a curated process of everything and um, I think Ed and Alex have talked about this a little bit. Um, decisions took a long time, but it meant we had ownership of everything. So when we did a call for papers, we um, invited specific people that we hadn't heard from and we invited specific communities that we hadn't heard from. And we looked around and said, who's making the least noise? Let's tap them on the shoulder. And um, that's, that started to work reasonably, reasonably well. And, but we're, we're always still learning. One of our other issues is environmental responsibility because we're a big issue, we can't, a big region, and we can't avoid air travel. So that's something we're, we're working on now and into the future. Um, but all of that work, all of that hard work to try and um, bring people on board that we haven't heard from and, and include people resulted in, um, this is uh, one of our panelists in the conference. Um, this is their reflection on, on the event. So. Um, that was great and that, that's reflected in general um, in this community because I go to science conferences and people say, are you funded? I go to industry conferences and people say, what can I sell you? And I come here and people are, how can we help? So um, we really want to start that culture early and engage with it and um, keep it rolling. Um, finally, following the, the general OSDO model, open by default. So there's our conference budget, you can go and read it. So anyone who wants to run a future conference can see what we did. Um, and a lot of decision making about what should be open and, and not open and what should, be, what should we make available and in general we're trying to coordinate multiple media channels and um, make sure that everyone who wants to have a say can have a say and specifically reaching out to people that we think we should hear from whether they've spoken up or not. Um, and I think that's it and I can hand over to John. Okay, so three minutes. I have a bunch of top tips. I don't think I'm going to go through them in any detail here because I don't think we have time, but that's okay. Because um, what I'd like to do instead is I'll come to the code sprint tomorrow, and if anybody is thinking about organizing an event, I'd love to sit down with you and uh, walk through some of our experiences, and um, I can show you in detail, you know, some of the tools we use, some of the things we learned, and I think um, uh, for for us we had some words of encouragement very early on that I think were. Uh, very powerful and motivating for us, and, um, and I hope we can kind of pay that forward um, and help other people do the same thing. So, again, top tips. I won't go through them, but um, hopefully if, if you have a chance to come to the Code Sprint tomorrow, we can go through some of those. So rather than go through those, I will just finish off with um, what's next. So, as mentioned, we have um, an entity, Austria Oceania. It's a public company. Um, and. We, we've spent the last year pulling this together, and I think what it does is, is, is we've, we've been working on building a foundation for, um, for m moving forward on, um, on several initiatives. So we're gonna continue to develop the annual conference. That'll be a key focus. Um, after foundation building, I think what we'll need to focus on quite heavily is sustainability of, and by sustainability, what I mean is not just the entity and the company, but also the community. And also, I think, considering what sustainability means in open source and how we as a community contribute to that. So projects overseas, what can, what can, what can we in Oceania be doing to, to, to help those projects out? Um, we're going to kick off some new initiatives, hopefully. We've, got, we've had some ideas, nothing set in stone yet, but we'll have some more small events, I hope. Uh, we'll work through uh, putting together some scholarships and grants for people to travel to and from events uh, in our region and beyond. We want to work on strengthening connections locally within Oceania between uh, the far-flung communities, uh, but also globally between Oceania and, and overseas, um, and support local initiatives um, in, in, diff in different parts of Oceania. 
Um, and I think one of the key things we're going to need to work on this year is find out what does the community actually want to do. So we're going to be doing a lot of outreach and listening and uh, working with people around the region to do that. And to, to finish off, you can communicate, you can uh, reach us anytime. We've got an email address, uh, we've got websites, we've got wiki pages, you can find us. Uh, drop us a line, we'd love to talk to you. Okay. Thanks. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I was really uh, impressed with this uh, presentation. Um, I guess there are some questions here. I'll hand you the microphone and you give it back. Huh? Well, thank you. We have a very nice talk and informative. Uh, I have two questions. The first one is, uh, if I understood correctly, you went for uh, the for-profit organization? Like, non no? Okay. That you can explain later. The second question would be whether there were any issues to convince the sponsors to go public with their budget they are sponsoring. Thank you. Um, so yeah, it's it's not it's a it's a not-for-profit. It's a public company. Um, it's a special kind of company that exists in Australia. I'm sure overseas have similar things. But yeah, it's clearly a not-for-profit and. Um, so that answers the first question. But the, the second part, um, <coughs> um, are sponsors comfortable with that? Well, so, I mean, in, in the budget that we've published, it's a, it's a slightly redacted version. It doesn't have any private information, so that, that was, we're fairly careful with that. Um, the sponsorship prospectus is public, so, I mean, and everybody knows who the sponsors are, so it's not hard to figure out how much sponsorship has actually been involved. But yeah, no, no, we're very careful to sort of keep any, anything private or, um, yeah. I see you. more question. Uh, do you need more on the committee? Uh, Always. I just, uh, Neil has just volunteered. Neil. Great. So, uh, I, mean, I mean, the only thing is that we, we're an active committee. We're volunteers, but we're kind of a... I mean, someone called it a duocracy. I don't know if that's kind of lame, but it, 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 <laughs> it feels right, like the right word because we... If something needed to be done, we didn't just talk about it as a committee and say, yes, we'd better do that. Maybe we'll write a strategy for how we do that. We just went and did it. And a lot of the work that we did, someone else would come along afterwards and add a whole bunch of quality to it. And so we ended up having three or four people iterating on these things. And, and in that way, we made each other stronger. So definitely um, need more people and um, means we get more continuity in. Yeah. Have you got any from the islands? Fiji, Rarotonga, Fiji, represented? Uh, are there any uh, members on our committee from the islands? So we have uh, uh, an in one individual from the islands, right? Uh, not this year. She, we okay. did, but uh, she's not on the committee this year. But, um, uh, at the moment, no. But uh, we will have a lot of people at the conference this year from the Pacific Islands, and we'll definitely be hitting them up pretty hard to join us. Yeah, yeah. I have an idea. So okay. Let's talk. Okay. Yeah. We still have uh, two minutes for... Any more questions? Um, yes. Uh, could you speak more to the decision-making process? You talked about consensus building. Could you just expand on that? Thank you. Um, so we call it a consensus building model, but we're not following any um, particular model. I think we're going very instinctively based on um, an ethos of making sure that everybody in the group has an opportunity to make their views known, um, taking time to bring out those views, and also n not assuming that um, you know a face-to-face -face meeting or a video meeting is necessarily the best uh, venue for all those views to come out. So I think you know a process of Eliciting views, um, testing ideas, um, discussing them at length, as, as mentioned, and um, sort of investing in that, um, just investing in that process to make sure that we're, um, that, that everybody does have the opportunity to fully express their opinion and come to some sort of a shared, I guess, vision. Even if not everybody agrees all the time, uh, which we found, um, at least we've all kind of had a good chance to talk about the pros and cons of whatever idea and um, in the end come to something we can all live with. Yeah. There's time for one last question. And 
or make a comment? Um, yeah, so just touching on decision making, a couple of things that we were able to generate in the committee were, were this idea of um, if you find a problem, you have to also bring a solution. So it's, it's not easy, but if someone comes up and says, oh, that's a terrible idea, it's expected, and this is part of the culture now, that you have an alternative to propose. And um, that, that is a really powerful mechanism for, for trying to get things done that we found. So that's... Yeah. Sounds obvious, right? But <laughs> okay, thanks again. Um, a round of applause for these uh, gentlemen. <laughs> Very impressive how you set something up in this uh, fast and dispersed area, I must say. Thank you.